In this video, I'm going to take you through the correct procedure for making a spread plate using E. coli and how to achieve a good aseptic technique while doing this. So after you've disinfected the bench with Vercon, you need to make sure you work in, in an area close enough to the Bunsen flame, as this is a very common problem that people don't often do. You should always work around a blue flame. Label your plate with your initials, date and organism, which in this case is E. coli. So next you need to get your pipette and set the volume. I've used 100 microliters for this example. Without touching the pipette tips, push one onto the end of the pipette. Everything must be done close to the flame and as quickly as possible to ensure that contamination doesn't occur, but don't rush it. Using one hand, unscrew the cap of the culture bottle and hold it with the same hand. You can then draw up some culture with the pipette in the other hand. As soon as you have got the culture, put the cap back on the bottle. Lift the lid off the plate as little as possible and transfer the culture onto the plate, replacing the lid as soon as you have done this. Next, open a sterile packet of spreaders, take one out and carefully reseal the packet. While only lifting the plate lid off as much as you need to, start spreading the culture onto the agar with the spreader. Make sure that you get the culture into all the edges of the plate. An easy way to do this and get an even spread is to hold the spreader still and spin the plate. When you start to feel slight resistance during spreading, you can stop, as this indicates that the culture has sufficiently absorbed into the agar. Once you have finished spreading, place the spreader into the beaker of Vercon on the bench. So that's how you make a spread plate using E. coli. If you remember the key points, such as keeping close to the Bunsen flame, and not talking while plating up, you shouldn't have any problems. 